So um, another category of risk is DEX risk or decentralized exchange risk. And I put it in the list of risks, but we've really already talked about uh, the sort of risks that are involved with decentralized exchange. So we've talked about uh, in great detail the Uniswap uh, version 2 automated uh, market maker. And you remember with the constant product and some of the issues that are involved with, uh, with, um, with these, uh, these automated market makers. But we also talked about how to handle the order books in exchange and whether to have an on-chain order book or something off-chain and the risks that, uh, that we uh, deal with um, with that. We indeed uh, talked about uh, an interesting potential solution uh, of using a layer two uh, to do uh, the limit order book. But again, there are different protocols that use different approaches. Some of them are, uh, are better than others and, and we will see. So again, in this space, given that it's so young, that uh, the protocol, you might try a number of different things, but the one that uh, people go to must be working the best. And then others kind of change uh, towards that particular uh, protocol. So, uh, so again, this idea of how do we store all the information that happens before an exchange actually happens. So I've shown you uh, the order books before, and, uh, and I've shown you where uh, the buy orders and sell orders uh, kind of meet and the spread between the two. But there's so much other information that isn't yet implemented. So it's not necessarily, it's, it's not a transaction. It's just like a bid and an offer. But all of that needs to be taken uh, care of. And this is a, a challenge with, um, with the decentralized uh, exchanges. So um, we've talked about the constant function uh, market maker in terms of the Uniswap uh, version two. We've also talked about the version three uh, that is more akin to a limit order book where you can specify a range for the liquidity that you actually uh, allocate. Um, and we've talked about some innovations in that space where you're gonna have a pool with multiple assets with different sizes of the assets like in, in Balancer. So uh, again, the way that these protocols work, we know some of the downsides like the impermanent loss. Uh, we know that if you allocate liquidity, um, to a DEX, then you're actually earning a return based upon the transactions. So uh, if there's a transaction, might be 30 basis points, that goes into the pool and you're being compensated uh, by that. Liquidity obviously is another issue here. If there's insufficient liquidity, then um, that's gonna lead to potentially very large slippage and uh, potentially very large uh, in permanent loss. And we spent a lot of time going through uh, the details of the impermanent loss. So just to review that, that um, because it is so important, that uh, if you allocate liquidity to, let's say, a version two uh, Uniswap, and then uh, when you do that, there's an equal amount of asset one and asset two then if there's a deviation in those prices, then there uh, will be an impermanent loss. And the impermanent loss is basically just the opportunity cost. So if you had held those two uh, assets rather than deploying them to the uh, automated market maker, then you would be better off. And the size of that loss is a direct function of the volatility of the exchange rate between the two assets. So something like USDC and Ether, that's got very large volatility and it will have large and permanent loss. Whereas something like DAI 
and USDC, both stable coins, give you very low volatility, very low uh, and permanent loss. So, so these are, are risks that people face when they actually uh, deploy liquidity to um, something like a constant function um, automated market uh, maker. Um, we've talked uh, a little bit about these order books, and I've suggested that having an on-chain uh, order book is something that doesn't make a lot of sense today. So given the cost of gas, uh, to have something on-chain is just too expensive. And when it's too expensive, there's just not going to be sufficient liquidity. In the future, when we go to Ethereum uh, 2.0, the on-chain uh, order book becomes much more reasonable because the cost of doing on-chain transactions will be uh, greatly uh, decreased. Um, Off-chain, that has got advantages and disadvantages. So it really depends on how you do it. So you need to do it in a very secure fashion. We talked about DYDX, they've got a layer two. Um, so that is like a multi-signature um, wallet that's very secure. And it greatly reduces the, the number of uh, on-chain uh, transactions. So when there is a transaction, so when you actually meet um, the, the bid and the ask, the buyer and the seller, uh, when the transaction actually occurs, then that goes on chain. But all of the bids and the asks are, are kept in this layer two where the cost of actually transacting is close to zero. Okay, so there's different ways to do this uh, and different advantages. So the, the point here is that, again, uh, like other issues in DeFi, there's many different approaches uh, to decentralized exchange. Uh, we will see what, uh, what happens. Um, and those that implement uh, a technique that is too costly or is insecure, uh, they will not succeed. So it's basically the, the, the fittest uh, will survive in, in this uh, particular space. It is like uh, natural selection on steroids.